Now, with that said, if we look actually on our chart and liver is over here at 8 o'clock on their other eye, on their, on their, um, that would be their right eye, 7, 8. There's actually, luckily, no real markings in the liver. So meaning, I'm not going to worry quite as bad about liver because there's also not a mark. But if there was a mark here too, I'm really now going to worry about this person. Which means that person better not be um, alcoholic, drug abuse, anything anything that would affect the liver. So hepatitis. hepatitis, you know, like if they're around people that have something like that, they would have picked it up probably just like that. Now, because there's no mark here, it isn't going to affect me quite as badly. Still, of course, I'm going to notice it. And yes, it's on here, but I'm not going to worry about it as much. So if we were going to finish off her, her left chart, because usually I only stick with one. So I've done... Um, Okay, so we went down and we did five. Then the only next one would be at about eight. There's, well, there's another one here about nine, but eight o'clock. So That's eight o'clock. No, now because it's on the left, there's, there's, there's oh. the back. It's the okay. lower back, yeah. And it's the middle. And there's two marks for the back. So I'm going to go look under um, the skeletal middle. And there's two marks here for lower back, okay. Then up here by nine o'clock on the there's one right here on the outside and one beside it. And if I come up here, then we're getting into one for lymph and one for skin. So lymph, we're gonna put one and skin. Skin we're also gonna put one. Okay. Now, just checking to make sure that there's no other lines. Rarifications I would look for, but this eye doesn't have anything else to, to notice. There's nothing else there. Now going to their other eye, same thing. Going to start at, at noon, working my way around. And the first thing that it is is about 3.15. There's a mark there. But now what we have to do is go make sure that we're on the right chart. So 3.15 gets into esophagus. So we're going to go look for esophagus. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a mark under throat and, and esophagus under digestive. Your guys' new charts will have a little bit different than this one. Um, but just follow, just follow your, your list here and go look at it. Okay, so then I'm going to move down again. And okay, so if that is 6 o'clock, then we're at 4 o'clock. Four o'clock now is uh, upper back, right? Because we have to make sure that we're on the right. So upper back, so I'm going to go back on my chart, go squeal. Upper back, put a mark in there. And then at about four, just about five o'clock. So now it gets into bladder. So I'm going to go under urinary, put a mark on bladder, okay? And then at about 5.15 and also about 5.30, you're gonna, there's two marks here for kidney. So I'm going to go into kidney and put two, two there. Okay, and then as I move over about 7 o'clock, there's a mark here. 7 o'clock on the chart is ovary. So then I'm just going to go back to my paper, make a mark there. Looking at the rest of the eye. Yeah, nothing else to look at. Okay. So, with now having all my marks, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my uh, new page, your chart, okay, and you're going to take everything that you had found on that person. And so, what happens here now is I have digestive and I have one real one so under health chart that would have been the two page chart okay you guys would have done your clients charts mm -hmm. okay and anything in hospitalization surgeries injuries like if there was um, things that they had operated on or injuries that they had I would put a tick then on my uh, box 
in here under health chart. Okay, and same same with going through this page. If they have stuff that happened to them, and I want to know from birth to now, not just five years, I want to know their whole life history of anything. So this now health chart you want in as much detail as possible, because from this it goes on to this section here, and then you're going to put ticks on here too for that person. But now what we're going to do is from the chart that we had seen, we're now going to put it under our biology. And so they had one tick for uh, digestive in here. Now in a way they have 14, and I might mark 14, but this was all color. Okay, so this would be a total of 15 marks, and I'm going to put a question mark to it. Because I care about it because of the liver color, but I'm going to just hold off and find out more. Because if their health chart told me that they're healthy and that they don't do drugs and they you know, aren't into that stuff, um, I'm not going to worry about them as much. Because that's what could happen if they decided to be a drinker and exactly. a drinker, then they could Yes, yeah, or if they that. totally abuse their body. Yeah, yeah. So now in, in skeletal here, they have three marks. So I'm going to take here and I'm going to mark three because there was three in total. Lymphatic, there was only one, so I'm just going to put one in lymph. Uh, respiratory, there was only one, so I'm going to put one there. Reproductive, they actually had two, one, like one's black, but they have two marks there for reproductive, so I'm going to put two marks there. Uh, urinary, they actually have three. So I'm going to put three there. Okay. Now, senses, they have two. So I'm going to put two there. Now, how many marks do you guys remember that it takes before I worry about three somebody? To five. Three to five. So I'm well, going to... 14. Right well, yeah. But not 100% real. Not yeah. four. Though. Right? They're, they're not actually real, real marks. They're just color. Okay. Yeah. So I have three here. I have three here. I only have two. I only really have one. One, one, and two. So the systems that I'm going to kind of pay attention to now for this person is skeletal and urinary. When you have their health chart, now this is just a, a past person that I, I'm just showing you from a picture, but if you actually had this client and you actually could have their real health chart, it matters then because if they've had um, a broken wrist or a broken ankle or um, you know sprained muscles or they're telling you their story, right? Like when you do their health form up, in here, when they're saying, you know, any muscular Urinary, issues. Urinary, chronic bladder infections, yeah. or chronic UTIs, right? right? I want to know any of this information because this will tell me another part of the story. And their chart, you know, like if, if they've had, let's say, three broken bones and they've had a fracture, well, their eye already says that their skeletal system is a little bit... I hate using the word we. Compromise. Compromise be a good one. So this would make sense. But all of a sudden, let's say they have a whole bunch of muscle issues, but they don't have any natural muscle issues in the eye. There's something else going on here then, and what is probably emotional, because it's not physical. So then I can actually start dealing with them with maybe ECT or, hmm. you know, like with um, other modalities that we know to help balance this body out. Now, if, let's say, liver digestion, if they say that they have, um, you know, they, they don't go to the washroom, right? Like we're asking them, how are your bowel movements, right? That's one of the questions. And they say, well, I only go once every three days. And we already know that there's a possibility here with color issue of cancer. If this person is not going to the bathroom, they're not detoxing properly. If they're not detoxing properly, that means toxins are in their body even longer than it's supposed to be. Which then, who knows, might trigger cancer because it's toxins, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know they don't know what causes cancer yet, but we know that smoking causes lung cancer. So toxins, it makes sense that, you know, that's a possibility in there then. So you're getting kind of an idea of this. Okay, so what will happen then is from here, before we get you guys really starting on your own, the last part um, that you're going to learn now is, is then F, 
the uh, red, the emotional part of the body. So in your book, I've given you just a really quick, um, really quick information about emotional because actually Denny Ray Johnson, What the Eye Reveals, that's his book. Wonderful book to buy if you guys actually can purchase it. It is a really, really good book. Um, and it's thick, like it's a huge book. And all it talks about is only emotional issues yeah, in, in the pictures. person's. Oh yeah. yeah, oodles and oodles of pictures. Mm -hmm. And so what they're saying here is, is a stream eye, which means neurogenic, a neurogenic eye, okay? So somebody who has a stream eye is a neurogenic eye. Yeah, that one would be. This one here, right, has it. This one here has it. No lacunas, absolutely no lacunas and also no flex. So they're stream eyes. And so what it's telling you then is a bit of information about them. Now on your chart, what I've given you is a stream eye to make it like straight lines, is they then are steady. Their, their personality is steady, stable, balancing, support, they're sensitive, they're a bit of an intuitive, you know, that kind of thing. But um, they're very stable people. And so you already know a little bit about them is that they're not flaky, they're not wishy-washy, they're not, um, you know, the other kind of <laughs> people. They're, so stable would be a really good word for them. Now, people with lacunas, so if you have somebody with a lot of lacunas in the eyes, these are considered emotional type. They, we call them flowers, or, well, <laughs> Jenny Ray does. And so this person is emotional. On your chart, you'll see that. And you want to know if both eyes are like that or if just one eye is like that. Now, jeweled eyes, which is the eye, the person that we were doing, they were a jewel. Okay. Why? What's a jewel again? Flake. Uh, flex. Oh, dots. Yeah. Okay. Flex. Flex. And. So you're a jewel. <laughs> I think she's a jewel. I'd have to look again. I don't remember. So with the jeweled eyes, it, this, the person that we were doing is one in both, so we're going to leave it there. Now, somebody who's a shaker, so from <laughs> the jeweled eye to a shaker's eye, oh, okay, you're a, shaker. a shaker's <laughs> eye has flex and lacunas. And then those kind of people, shaker, kind of means that, they're, they're movers, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're going to shake and move you. <laughs> they're not people who sit still for very long, they like to do extremes successes and failures like they're they break the mold their their accomplishments their pioneers their people who just go 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 and you know just want to change the world okay now when you're looking at uh, right eye left eye dominance if we're going to look at both eyes okay so we're going to look at both eyes we want to take a uh, decision on which eye is more more flex, more lacunas, more something. Okay, so which eye talks to you more? I guess her eye might be a little... I personally, the only reason I would have said her left eye compared to her right eye is because there's flex everywhere. My eye wants to go everywhere to look. And in the right eye, it only goes to this one section. And you're only looking for flex and color? Whatever. Flex, lacunas, okay. um, you know, depending. We'll go through a few people's are eyes. These dual, are these eye types only for certain, for lymph, for lymphatic, mixed binary? Yeah. Like these types can be in any eye. Yeah, and we're going to go through them. Okay. Yeah, we're going to go through them. So this person has a choice of being right eye do dominant or left eye dominant. Um, Usually somebody is one or the other. You can also look at a digestive ring. I'm just going to look real quick. See, here on the, um, this would be that person's right eye. It's pretty balanced. But the left eye starts going, whoosh, you know, in different oh, okay. directions. So now her pupil also, like her digestive zone, makes me look at her more in that left eye. So I would have put her as a left. Now, if we were going to ask the person to put their hands on top of each other, which thumb rests on top, okay, that is what you're writing down. Does the left hand sit on top or does the right hand sit on top? Left. Yes. If they cross their legs, <laughs> does the left hand sit on top or does the right? Right. <laughs> you're right. You're creeping me out. You're creeping me out. 
Now, <laughs> the other one is, what side of the bed do you sleep on? Is somebody to your left or somebody to your right? Because if somebody's to the right, you sleep on the left. If somebody's to your left, you sleep on the right. Well, you we used to sleep on the left. Like somebody sure, if somebody was in bed with you, yeah. Mm. Some people, it's very important. I mean, that have a side. Yeah, that have yeah, a side. I just have this side away from them. Okay, and then what you would do is total them up and find out if they're analytical, if they're left brained, or if they're right brained, creative. So, right brained people are more creative, you know, artsy, little flashy, that kind of thing. Left brained people are analytical, straightforward, um, they talk facts, you know, that kind of information. <laughs> okay, then what you're looking at is. The next one, direction of flow, is of the digestive zone, and you want to know, is it balanced, is it out, or is it in? Because then that will tell us if they are extroverted or introverted. Now, for this person, both are slightly out. Okay, mm -hmm. they're, they're both slightly a little too big. And so I'm going to write here, out. Which means this person, well, they're only slightly, which means they're a little bit out there. You know, like meaning, if you went to a party, this person would go talk to both men and women equally. They, they, would, they wouldn't be the person sitting on the couch waiting for everybody to come to them. They'd be the ones going around shaking people's hands, saying, hi, my name is da-da-da. You know, but they're not extravagantly um, out there either. Like, where's our... Here we go. <laughs> now this person is an absolute extroverted out there. They wouldn't give a hoot what anybody thought of them because they're just <laughs> totally out there. <laughs> now these people though might be a little quiet and sitting back, you know, waiting like this one here too. Their, their pupils pretty you know, their digestive zone is pretty close to the people there. And so these people aren't ones to go around saying, hi, how you doing? Or, you know, you're not going to find them probably multi-level marketing people who are successful. <laughs> that other person, though, probably makes millions of dollars because they're so out there, they don't care. And they'll take a million no's <laughs> to get that yes. Okay, so the next thing then would be your subtype transfer from the other page. So if the person has contraction furrows, then it's, then it's the freedom. Okay, that was from here. So if this person had contraction furrows, and if we would do hers, I would say yes, and I would say they were probably about a six um, when you look at the contraction furrows. And if you're going to do both eyes, that's fine. Contraction furrows, so what we're going to do is copy that six, okay? Now, this person doesn't have hydroid or uric acid, and scurf rim, they really don't have one. So we don't have to worry about that. And they also do not have that uh, lipenic diathesis or the cholesterol ring, if you want to call it that. So they don't have that either. So depending, whatever you had 